welcome to Living a Sustainable Dream. And this is our off-grid home. And one of the features in our off-grid home is our wood cook stove. And so what we have is a Kitchen Queen 380 wood cook stove. And we use this not only to cook our food, but to heat our home, which it does fine for 1100 square feet. And also we use it to heat our domestic hot water. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a tour on how to use thermal siphon and heat your hot water through your wood cook stove. Looking into the firebox, you can actually see a beautiful fire, but not only that, you get to see the water coil. It's really simply just this pipe here that comes in, does a U-turn, and then goes right back out. And anyone can build one of these uh, by just going to their local hardware store and buying the fittings and then putting them together using a vise. It's real simple. So that is the water coil. It basically heats the water inside the pipe uh, from the fire, and then it just sends the hot water right back out on top. Okay, on the back side of the wood cook stove, you'll see that we have our hot water storage tank. Now, this is an electric water heater that we repurpose just to store hot water. It has no electricity whatsoever to it. Now, the reason it is in our kitchen and this close to the stove is because we want to use what is called thermal siphon. And thermal siphon is pretty much a gravity feed system that the water will drain into the wood cook stove. The wood cook stove will heat up the water through the water coil that you saw, and it'll send the hot water out and then up to the top of uh, this uh, water tank and then keep the water heated slowly so you get hot water. Um, so every, just remember the guideline, every two feet of distance from your wood cook stove, you need a vertical foot of drop. Now, if you want your water tank somewhere else, like on the other side of your kitchen wall and you want to hide in a closet somewhere, you can do that and violate this guideline. But one way to violate it is to actually use a water pump. And you have to have a water pump do it on the cold side. The water pump will force the water out of the tank into the wood cook stove, heat it, and then send it back up to the top. Um, however, if you're off-grid like we are, we don't want to use the extra electricity to, um, to run a system like this because we want to use all our electricity for our lights and other things that we want to use, uh, use that for. So this is literally an electricity-free system because it is using thermal siphon properly. If you do not plumb it correctly and you try to break the guideline of two feet by one foot drop, uh, you'll have all sorts of problems. Uh, you can have the water going in the wrong direction, heating up into the cold side versus the hot side, or it just doesn't flow. So just remember, follow the guidelines or just hook up a pump. All right, so let me go ahead and talk about how the water travels from the tank through the wood cook stove and then back up to the top and show you how I hooked up all the pipes. So if you look down here, This is where the emergency drain valve used to be. So I pulled it off, hooked up a copper pipe to get the distance I needed here. I then did my vertical foot drop and I put the drain valve on the cold side. Mm -hmm. So this emergency drain valve is still there. I just hook up a garden hose to it and I just run it out the door when I drain the system to either repair it, change it, or add things or take away. Uh, it then goes in another galvanized pipe into the wood stove and it goes on the bottom. So the cold always go on the bottom and the hot comes out on top you know, heat rises. Another feature that you need to really consider if you're gonna hook this up to your water coil inside is to use what is called a pipe union fitting. Now the pipe union fitting, basically you have two nuts that hook two pipes together and the center nut on top actually keeps the two flanges together to keep a leak from happening. And by doing that, you don't have to worry about if you put a coupling on here, that it would, if you tighten it down, you might be unscrewing or untightening uh, the water coil inside, which could cause a slow leak, or even causing it to tighten too far down and bottoming it out, which would then also cause a slow leak. So make sure you always use a pipe union fitting on your water coil or heat exchanger uh, as you enter it in and exit the, the wood cook stove. So let me go ahead and show you the top of our water heater and how the water flows up there and show you more of the travel and we'll talk about that. Looking at the top of the uh, water tank where I'm storing the hot water, I'm going to show you how the, all these pipes run. It's not as uh, scary as it looks. Anyway, this is the cold, uh, cold water coming in. It just travels in from the main uh, house line right here to this T. Now, I just want you guys to realize there are uh, two T's on here. I'll explain in a minute. This could actually be an elbow. Um, this shutoff valve up here, I was planning on maybe doing a um, solar water heater, but that plan kind of, we're just kind of putting that on hold. We got other important things we need to do before we do that. Anyway, this could be an elbow, and this would be the water goes into this pipe here. Now that pipe travels all the way to the very bottom of this tank. 
so that the cold water travels through the actual warm or hot water that surrounds it. Um, and then it gets to the bottom and goes out the, uh, the drain valve. Now let's talk a little bit about the hot water. So the hot water comes off this pop top pipe here, goes up and then travels down to the center. Now this is where the old TMP or temperature and pressure valve used to be in the system. The TMP valve is not gone, I just moved it to a different spot. Uh, so please be aware that you need to have a temperature and pressure valve in the system. So let's talk about that. All right, now on the far side, this is the domestic hot water pipe here. It comes right off here and you have your hot water. I have this pressure gauge just for me to see what's going on with the pressure of the system. Um, but it also, it lets me know that if this blows off, which is, this is the temperature and pressure valve that I put on here. And the temperature and pressure valve I bought, I bought a lower temperature blow off here. It'll blow at about 150 to 175 degrees, which is really important. Now, once this blows, and this is the emergency valve open, you can open that up and water would, would be released to the system. But once it blows, it travels through this copper pipe here. Now I use half inch copper pipe and it goes down to a lidded bucket that I drilled a hole in and then ran the pipe about six inches below the lid. Now if this blows because it gets too hot, it will drop probably about a gallon to two gallons of water into that bucket. And it's really important to keep that lid on the bucket so hot scalding water doesn't just blow out and then bounce around outside the bucket, hit things. Um, the lid keeps, uh, keeps things protected that way. So uh, I've had this blow in the last three years. This thing has only blown one time. Um, and it only released about a gallon of water. So just be aware that that will happen if you overheat your water and you don't, um, you don't use it regularly. Okay, so looking at this val uh, this uh, union here, this is a uh, cross union that I have here. It's got a four-way, and the rest of it goes off into the house domestic hot. Now, every fixture in my house receives hot water from this tank. So my kitchen sink gets hot water, bathroom sink, my shower, and my laundry uh, machine actually gets hot water from the wood cook stove during the winter times. So just be aware that that's, that's how we set this up and it's really uh, a nice feature. It's just like having an electric one, but instead of electricity, I'm using wood uh, to do that. Uh, PEX is also something you need to be aware of. I use PEX throughout the house, love it. Uh, for the fact that it does do better in the cold if it freezes or not. Uh, just be aware that PEX does not like super hot water. So you don't want to go above 180 degrees uh, without compromising the PEX piping. Uh, so make sure that if you build a system like this that you always have a temperature and pressure valve included um, because you need to have what is called an open loop system, not a closed loop system. If you don't have this, you can superheat things and it can crack or rupture the pipes. Uh, and cause a lot of damage or even build up enough temperature to create steam and you don't want to do that. So just be aware to always include the temperature and pressure valve. All right. Okay, thank you for uh, joining us at Living a Sustainable Dream and seeing our wood cook stove and our wood cook stove does three major things for our house. It not only uh, cooks our food, it heats the home and it also heats our domestic hot water throughout the home as well. If you're off grid, this is something you might want to consider to, uh, to put all those systems together because that wood in that wood cook stove is doing three major things. If you're in a northern climate or a cool winter uh, area, this is a great system to have. Uh, please uh, subscribe and give us a thumbs up and like our video and we'll see if we can do more tips online uh, for you guys on how we've done our off-grid systems. Thank you.